What's up guys and welcome to the very first episode of my PS5 career mode. Yes, the next gen era is finally here and the wait is over and we're going to be beginning this career mode with QPR. Yes, that's right, Queen's Park Rangers of the championship and I am so, so excited. Seven grand a week and Omar Richards is the first man in for the new era here at the Kian Prince Foundation Stadium. And as for the youngsters as well, with the two new fullbacks coming in, keep your eye on those players, but also Charlie Kelman, 18 years old, American striker. And as we start December off as well, if you read the title for today's episode, this is the moment you were waiting for. Finally, 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 finally. It seems that like we have got ourselves a good player from the youth scouting for the first time this season. His name is Charles Bull, I absolutely love the name, sounds fantastic. Three star, three star, high low work rate, 66 overall already. Question is, what would his potential be as we take a look at him for the first time? An exciting prospect. Charles has the exciting prospect tag. Left wing cam, listed positions. Again, the three star, three star, as we know. And I love his, uh, his kitted out appearance as well, which I modified in the edit player section as well. I gave him the red tape on his hand. It's because this boy is from Hackney, all right? He's a local lad. He played on the Hackney Marshes as a kid. And, you know, he got the nickname, the bull, because of his surname as well. And when he was a kid, he was always getting teased because he's not a tall lad. He's only five foot seven. He's a little bit of a growth spurt, but he was a really, really short lad as a kid. He was always getting teased by opposition defenders. And then there was one game where he scored a hat trick when his team were two 0 down in a youth cup final. And he uh, he got the uh, the shirt of one of the uh, the opponent's players of one of the youngsters. And his dad said, "Yep, they can be the matador, but don't forget you're the bull." That's an awful origin story, but we're going to stick with it because I just said it. Charles Bull, the bull, as we'll know him, he has come through the youth ranks within the space of a week, and with 17 minutes to go, still tied at 1-1. Oh my goodness gracious me, I've just scored the flukiest goal ever. Yes, Nico Hamalin scores his first goal for the club. And as I always say, if you're going to score your first goal for the club, make it a memorable one. But this is the flukiest goal I think I've ever scored on FIFA, certainly in FIFA 21. This is a cross. All right, I'm just going to be totally honest with you here. You know, I'm not going to try and sell it as if I, I was aiming for the far post. No, this was a cross which just looped up in the air over the Dutch goalkeeper, Tim Crow, and in to the top corner. Very, very worrying signs there for our American striker. But five minutes after the restart, this would make up for it. Charles Bull first goal in professional football. I had to do the Matador celebration as well, mocking the Matador. Five minutes to go and there's one final chance for us to win it. Charles picks the ball up just inside the middle half, offloads to Kelman, quick ball into Amos, great run by the 17 year old and the finish as well as he pops it into the bottom corner and wins it with three minutes of normal time to go. The sender fans in the away end of the other end of the pitch into absolute jubilation. Regardless, Andy's in. You saw his key stats there. He's all about the physicality. He's quick. He's really strong. And again, a solid player and team player trait as well as we still had our two goal advantage. And directly after that, I had to show you this highlight. Not to break away from the immersion and the realism, but I thought it was too common to leave out here. So I uh, sent a long ball forward towards Jack Byrne and then yeah, sometimes, you know, physics can sort of go out the window in FIFA. I don't exactly know how on earth that ball went on that flight plan, uh, but it certainly did. <laughs> it went way out of the stadium. Can we have our ball back, please, mister? Well, we had to get a spare one from the ball girl after that because that was, um, wow. I mean, look at the spin, let alone the, the trajectory of that. That was absolutely extraordinary, man. I have to go now. My planet needs me. That ball is gone, and we ain't getting that one back for a quite a while. That's gone out of the playable uh, area in FIFA career mode there. We were relegated the following season and Cardiff have taken the lead. As Kelman off oh, the post, yes! I really feel like if we are to win this, we need to win it in extra time. And there's Willock. Yes! Player of the season. Ilyashev. And whilst we made hard work of it, 
we've delivered Premier League, here we come. There was me last season saying, you know, with Aston Villa going down, oh, do you know who I'd like to bring to the Kyan Prince Foundation Stadium? Jack Grealish. Oh yeah, I'd love Jack Grealish here in West London. What are we going to offer Aston Villa for Jack Grealish? What, £12 on a Mars bar? Like, it's not going to work. We've got no money whatsoever. We led by two at the break, but easily could have been three or four goals up. The Hornets had been absolutely stung themselves, and in the second half, looking for a third goal. Well, Bull could have had a hatch of assists in the first half, but in the second half, 90 minutes after the restart, he mocks the Matador. I love that celebration, man. I might have it made out of his uh, trademark celebration. It's really, really cool. Mocks the Matador as he makes it 3-0 and gets his first goal in a Premier League match. I've got to say, he's been impressive this season, no doubt about it, but this was the game where he really announced himself as one of Europe's rising stars. What a performance from the kid as we go two goals up against the championship side and progress looks all but secure. And also, I don't know if you spotted that there in the away end, but say a prayer to this young man who has sadly lost his legs after falling through the stand. Um, well, he's, he's, he's kind of jumping around, but he's fallen through the stand. It's, I, I don't think it looks good, to be honest. He's not realised. I think he fell through, but the euphoria of our second goal <laughs> sort of kicked in and he didn't realise. Yeah, I think those legs are probably coming off at full time and uh, Scott Triggs will have to visit in hospital. He's, he, you know, we've heard of the man with no legs. This is the fan with no legs. <laughs> he's definitely not getting those back. That gave us enough for a new signing. I've been bemoaning our lack of creativity. And so, on transfer deadline day, I just had to do it. Yes, Adel Tarat. So many of you guys have been calling out for the return of the Moroccan King at some point. I've been waiting for the right moment. I don't think Adel Tarat has ever been loved anywhere as much as he's been loved in West London at Loftus Road slash the Kind Prince Foundation Stadium. The QPR fans absolutely loved him. He's a magician with the ball at his feet, but pretty much directly from kickoff here. Well, I've got to be honest, sometimes your luck is in and sometimes your luck is out. And for this moment, our luck was in and it certainly was for the Moroccan King. Yes, Adel Tarat scores his first goal since returning back to Queen's Park Rangers and whilst it was a fortunate goal, it was still fantastic technique. We were just completely on top. The Red Devils just could not break us down. Our defence was unbelievable like it has been practically all season long and in the first half of extra time in stoppage time, Bright will say Sammy down the right, rolls it across and who's there at the back stick to turn it in and give us the deserved lead right before half time and extra time streets won't forget and today we're returning with the big one it is the biggest game of the series so far as we face Manchester City in our first ever major cup final dragging it back oh he's found some space oh and hard work on the pitch Oh, brilliant ball, it's two. Fantastic little ball inside. But that's what Milner brings. We'd have about 12 of them, 3-0. That's unfair on us. But I truly do believe that the game as a, as a series, that is a cracking ball by Nico. And that sums it up. You either have to make a realistic simulation-based game or you make it arcade again. Oh, well, consolation goal. It's not going to count because it's offside. If there was a game that sums up our season, it's this one. Wait, was he offside? Or did just the referee just blow for the full time? I'm, I'm going to assume he was offside. There's no way the referee would just mess us about like that. That would be the most cruel thing ever. Dear, dear, free... Unfair. I mean, I'll be honest here. This scoreline did not reflect the gameplay. I thought I actually played all right. <laughs> says the guy that lost 3-0. The big sale there, Omar Richards, he's off to Germany for 62.5 mil. And I am pretty gutted about it. Now, I've got to be honest here, out of all the players we've signed for this series, I think Omar has been my favourite. So, in the end, I opted to go for Nketia, and we picked up the former Arsenal striker on a five-year Regardless, Bright will say Samuel has indeed left the club and has gone to Hertha Berlin. So farewell to the captain. He's gone for £49 million. A deal which, again, was just too good to turn down. And also as well, I promoted a youngster at our academy as well. A new youth player graduates today and he's got the exciting prospect as well. It's the one I've been showing you more than any other. It's Cameron Wilkinson. I decided to be brave for don't just play damage limitation. Look for a route back into the game. And 42 minutes in... Oh my goodness gracious me. When I signed him to the club again, I said he still got it. He certainly does. Adel Tarat, the Moroccan king, captaining the side on the night on Christmas Day, has just given me a gift we'll remember for a long time. 
That is absolutely glorious. And, you know, I've scored some really nice goals, but uh, still 1-0 and uh, Ball denied his second assist of the game. But 30 minutes in, oh my god. And when we signed Adel Tarat, I said he could be a mentor for Charles Bull. Don't tell me his presence has not rubbed off on the young Bull. Extraordinary goal. He saw it on Christmas Day. And he thought, you know what? I'm going to try something like that. Absolutely glorious from Charles. Loops over Aaron Ramsdale. Did he mean it, though? First penalty, saved. Ida hits the post and then Foster. Second penalty, and Ketia always going to score. Top bins, 1-0. Morris, saved. Foster, still 1-0. Chance to double the lead. Kovalenko saved by Krull, and it's still 1-0. City, saved. Foster again. Brobby, bottom corner. Ice in his veins, 2-0. And Norwich needed a goal through Todd Cantwell to keep themselves in the shootout. Otherwise, it was all over already. And the cycling GK makes the save. And through the resulting corner, Ilias whips it in. And who's there to rise highest and head in the corner? I'm going to state his height once again. 5 foot 11, Cameron Wilkinson, the Youth Academy graduate, 16 years old, scores his first goal in professional football. And what a big goal it is as well to break the deadlock. Don't tell me, girls of Tinder, that this guy's not tall enough. And today we're returning with the big one. It is indeed the FA Cup final as we take on Leicester City at Wembley. The pressure. I mean, seriously, the pressure. Oh, what pressure! Pressure! What pressure! As Jamal stores forward. Go on, Jamal. Oh! Rinawata clears. Ref! Yes! New club captain. Lift our first major honour. QPR FA Cup winners. Get in! In today's episode, there is some absolutely crazy transfer drama, including the finale of the Ilias Share saga. You can either come back to West London, or you can go to the San Siro and you play your trade out there. And he said, you know what? Ever since leaving QPR and going to Crystal Palace, I've always wanted to come back. So Brett Gize is back, a former fan favourite of the Kind Prince Foundation Stadium. But uh, still, as you can see, the deal did go through in the end then, right before transfer deadline day. Ilias Share is now on a Fletico Madrid uh, Madrid player still for our following game on today's episode uh, taking on Manchester United here as the Red Devils will come and take us on the Kind Prince Foundation Stadium 30 minutes into the game we will take the lead yes Charles Ball defensively doing really well in this game and with 15 minutes to go oh yes Charles intercepts with the chest and then I love the flick as he splits two red shirts and look at this what can you call it a scorpion kick assist not really but we will flicks it through to Eddie and Ketia pops it through the legs of Dean Henderson we not only get the win but keep the clean sheet as well and there it is it's all over finally 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 we've got our first scalp in a Premier League game as we beat Manchester United by two goals to nil all retiring in the uh, case of Smalling and also Tarat but the one player that's staying come on the Boys, I can't believe this man, 41 years old, but he doesn't want to retire just yet. Ben Foster signs another one-year extension. Also, as I was going through my, uh, my, well, my traditional annual search of the free agents pool, I found uh, this guy. You might have heard of him, Lionel Messi, now on a free uh, transfer available, but I'm not going to sign him, of course, due to the realism. Eddie and Ketia, last year's Golden Boot winner, just missed out on it by two goals a couple of years ago. 87 rated, 25 years old, becoming one of the best strikers in the world. Pep Guardiola, there was interest last season. They didn't bite the bullet to get him, but now the Spaniard says he wants to form a gunner, leading the line for them as their long term Sergio Aguero replacement. Eddie did not need to think about this for long. In two days time after the bid was accepted he signs the thing and Eddie and Ketia goes from Arsenal to Queen's Park Rangers to Manchester City. £210 million to transfer fee. In the end I opted for the Canadian and Jonathan David comes in on a five year deal. So I've opted for the Canadian. This is the year where Charles Bull I think becomes the star of this team. He's not just one of the rising stars in European football. 
He's one of the best players in world football. This is Charles Ball's year. I've got to say, I've got big, big ambitions and big hopes for the kid. He's going to turn from the youngster to the man. So for the second game of the season, taking on Southampton away at St Mary's. Oh my word, whilst I want to see Charles add more goals to his game this season, we can't forget about his best asset. He's like LeBron James. The King's going to become the all-time leader in points scored in the NBA history when his career is said and done. But it's not his best skill. LeBron's best skill is passing, and it's the same with Charles. He can score goals, but look at this. What a ball by the ball. Incredible. I thought it's time to bring a fan favourite back to the Kyan Prince Foundation Stadium. He spent the last three seasons, or two and a half seasons, playing in Germany in the Bundesliga for Hoffenheim. But he was my favourite player, alongside the bull, of course, before we sold him to Hoffenheim. I've missed him dearly. Jamal's been an incredible replacement, but... You can't replace what Omar's done for my heart. What? I don't know. That was cringe. Well, shut up. <laughs> what was that? Welcome back, Bright Osei Samuel. Yes, of course, in real life, he's just gone to Fenerbahce. But here we're bringing him back to Queen's Park Rangers. 40.5 million, I believe, was the transfer fee we arranged with her to Berlin. And Bright Osei Samuel, like Omar Richards, left us in the same transfer window at the start of season three and rejoins the club in the same transfer window halfway through season five. Bright and Omar back at the Kyan Prince Foundation Stadium. Massive drama. In the first half, we saw history get made here in West London. Yes, Charles Ball finally breaks the record for most assists in a Premier League season with assists number 21 in a really drab 1-0 victory over the Magpies where defensively we shut them out and didn't create too much. Charles Ball with 21 assists in 25 games is a new record holder for most assists in a Premier League season. Gives the Gunners the lead and makes it 1-0 after the first shot was well saved but the rebound turned in. But right before the break, oh my goodness gracious me, just stop it. Charles because this should be illegal. Bull with an absolutely incredible goal and one of his best if not his best of his career so far. So many of his assists this year have been absolutely fancy but a couple of his goals have been amazing as well including this one. Fake Rabona rainbow flick. I think it was the first time volley. Did it hit the deck? I'm not entirely sure but anyway possibly a toe poke volley there from Bull but right in they found their away goal and right before the break well we kept him quiet in all the years he spent at a Hawthorne but now he's gone to Germany but he returns to England and punishes me for not signing him. Myron Bawadu who we passed up on signing in the summer opted for David makes it 2-0 looking for the goals we required but uh, bought Jonathan David off the bench so I thought what's the point in having 125 million pounds worth of talent sat on the bench when we need three goals so a lucky goal this time falling in our favour as Andy big Andy fires us in the level of a duty away goal ruling whilst we are tied on the night and over two legs we were still going out unless we could find a third goal to win us this game and with minutes to go Jonathan David to guess who the ball raging as he does getting into the box and drilling it in to the top corner with 11 minutes to go to complete the best turnaround of the series QPR 3 her to Berlin too, and from nothing, from nowhere, 2 0 down at the break, surely going out. We score three second half goals in, without question, the game and the win of this series. Unbelievable match, and my best comeback in this year's FIFA. Flies into a challenge on Marcus Edwards, and I've got to say here, I don't think this is a penalty one bit. Absolutely no way. He clearly wins the ball before he takes the man. Yes, it's a strong challenge, but a fair one, at least in my opinion. But a referee gives a spot kick, books the, uh, books the big Nigerian as well. And Shirky scores, sends it right down the middle as Woodman goes to his left. And Leon take the lead in extra time. Oh, it's a perfectly timed through ball. Oh, yes! to Robin! Get in! Come on! Oh, where is it? Where is it? Yes! Oh, there go the subs. Yes! QPR Premier League winners get in! Next season we'll be going to the Champions League for the first time ever, but I hope this is just the start 
for us. We've won our first ever Premier League title and are now taking on Brighton over Albion in our third FA Cup final in four years as we aim to reclaim the trophy we lost last season. David, 1-0, called it before he had it back in the net. The danger not clear with P attack and that's a lovely ball inside and it's 1-1. One, one. And I didn't feel confident and if Tarat misses this, we're in deep trouble. But we still need a stop. And Gaz has not saved one all shootout long. He was the hero. But not this time. Major underdogs heading into the final. Not many would have given them a chance. But they stood up to the test. They played just as good as us. And they win it on penalties. Christian Perez is the name. 17 years old is the age. 73 rating is the rating. But the player he's modelled on, well, you know it when you see his list of positions and the status. Potential to be special. Who else could it be with five-star skill moves? He's absolutely rapid. High-low work rate. Three-star weak foot. Yep, it is Messi's regen. Steps around his man as Messi's regen finds a pocket of space. Rolls it across and Charles Ball. Can you believe it? Seconds in to stoppage time, wins us the game. And everyone in the stands thinking whilst he's 40 years old now, he's still got some left in the tank. We might see another iconic Cristiano Ronaldo moment. Messi's regen assists the best young player in the world, Charles Bull. As the youngsters say to the old man, it's time to hang up those boots, Ronnie. The new generation have arrived. Biggest game of the series. So taking on her to Berlin, heading into the game after what happened last season, I didn't want to concede an early away goal. Oh. <laughs> what a goal from Charles Bull. Absolutely unbelievable. You know what he likes to do. He's the reverse Iron Robin. Steps in from the left. Shoots on the right, under pressure, taken down just as he releases the ball, but he clips the underside of the bar, Tony Yeboah style, for one of the goals of the series, and probably my favourite goal of the series. The ball celebrates with me, a great defensive display from Queen's Park Rangers, not for the first time, and it is over. A moment of magic from Charles Bull, and a defensive masterclass from the boys at the back. See us in to our first ever Champions League final. We'll take on Bayern Munich. I feel sorry for Big Josh. I would have loved it to have been Valencia, but a, a late own goal from Big Josh or Bayern Munich make it through to the final. And that should have done it now. Kel was 11th in the Premier League. Referee blow that final whistle, and we should see scenes of celebration. Should. No. Surely. No way did Man City score six. No way did Man City score six. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my word. Longest 12 seconds of my life, that. And today we're returning with the season finale and our first ever European final as we take on Bayern Munich in the Champions League final. Oh, what a touch. Oh, and he just bottled it. Oh! Oh my god. Oh my god, I've just conceded to a stand tackle. Uh, the players that are just so talented, the players that have got the eye for vision. I love the, the great passes of the league as well, you know. Oh, brilliant. Uh, this is Right, everyone should be quiet. Oh, there's got to be a penalty. Uh, Lamello's great, and of course I've got to give it to the boys. The Champions League final, it's a Doc's career mode. What do you expect, baby? What do you expect? Ice in his veins. Charles Ball 1-1. One, one. David missed a penalty very recently. No, not very recently. It was during the season anyway. But Charles was never going to miss. I think I've got a 100% conversion ratio with Charles. Of course he'd have to take it. We're, we're sort of, at the moment, like, oh, Big Andy's gone down, he's in pain. He's not getting up from that. Oh, Big Andy. Captain. Leader. Legend. Injured. I don't know. I feel like I'm a bit of a perfectionist, to be honest. And I do feel at times like I'm just... That's a brilliant ball. John Boy! Oh! <laughs> what a finish! You know, aggressive towards the lockdown. I totally understand it. And I totally uh, appreciate the government's predicament. And oh, what a ball. Oh, what a finish. But I don't know what exactly I'd... <gasps> Surely. Yes! Season 
won OG! Charlie! Sent him to France as a boy, returned as a man. Six years later, Champions League final possible winning goal. When I... Oh, no. No! You know, why Why am I... What a, what a save, Freddy. Why am I taking these drugs? I don't need them. I don't need them. I'm better than this. And I don't need them. Oh my god, if Grady scores this, it'll be the greatest substitution of all time. After last year's choke against Brighton, Freddie Woodman. I don't think I've ever seen that animation before. Shovels it away. And QPR have won the Champions League on penalties. Oh my, that's one of the greatest finals I've ever played. If not the greatest, you know. If not the greatest. Oh, when I missed that penalty with Charles, I thought it's over. And it's Joe Gomez who lifts the trophy because of Andy's injury. And despite how significant and serious it looked, he's still jumping around on the left-hand side like he's not even hurt. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh. Freddie Woodman for those penalty saves. And he made some massive ones during the game as well. <sighs> Unreal and I'm out of breath. Unreal and I'm that's it. I can't I can't improve on that. I can't get better than that. That is one of the greatest ways to end a series. A six goal thriller and an amazing penalty shootout. We came back from the brink to win it. Redemption after last year's FA Cup final. My word, that was incredible. Just a minute of your time. What a way to end the series. What a series. I've got to end it there. I, I, I can't put it off forever. Thank you so much for all the support, guys. Perhaps the greatest season finale I've ever done. Perhaps the greatest Champions League final we've ever had. Perhaps the greatest ending we possibly could have dreamed of. It's been amazing. From me to you, much love, sincerely. An incredible series. An incredible ending. I love you guys so much. I'm so grateful for your support, man. You mean the world to me. Much love, sincerely. And what a series. What an ending. What a way to bow out. Much love, guys. Much love. It's over. It's over. Incredible. Incredible. Surely the GOAT ending. Incredible.